Okay, um, now we're going to kind of backtrack and um, focus uh, a little bit more on our on our work in Montana in specific. Um, and just as background context for folks who may not know, um, SBI uh, started a project in uh, earlier this year in southeastern Montana in Bighorn, Rosebud and Yellowstone counties, which is the Northern Cheyenne Crow uh, reservations. Um, as well as uh, the city of Billings. Um, and that project is on missing and murdered indigenous people and um, organizing and bringing the families together and fighting for justice for all of them. Um, so many of the cases in that area are unsolved um, and have been neglected or there's very clear evidence of um, corruption or um, all sorts of mistakes done in cases that we felt it was really important to make sure that every family in that area had a platform and that every case was going to be pushed forward to justice. So today we're talking about that. Um, at the end of this webinar, we'll talk more about some of our next steps in that work. But today we really wanted you to hear from one of the families in the area um, and hear about their experiences in their own words. So today we have Jennifer White Bear joining us. And uh, Jennifer, as mentioned, is the mother of Bonnie Three Irons. Um, Jennifer, thank you for joining. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, maybe could you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and um, your connections to the MMIP or MMIW issue? Um, just anything you're comfortable sharing. Um, <clears throat> hello, I am, my name is Jennifer White Bear. I am a Crow native from Crow Agency, Montana. I am a mother of four children. Uh, Bonnie was one of them. Uh, I have 34 grandkids, two more on the way, two great, um, uh, um, my daughter, Bonnie, oh, she was left in the Wolf Mountains on April, in between April 10th. And we didn't know that she was left up there for three days. And the person she left with was a very, very, very close relative. Uh, someone she grew up with. Um, um, it took us a couple of days. We searched for her and where we search where we started searching from is where we found her so we know even though the cops say it was there was no foul play we we all know i think we're better detectives because she was our child that's my my child. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, I just wanna um, thank you for your courageousness and your bravery. I know that this is really, really hard to talk about. And um, I know that you've stepped up to be Bonnie's voice um, and that that's a hard burden to carry. So um, if you need a break or if you need to step away, just let us know. Um, we're here just to listen um, to what you want to share. Um, my next question for you is, um, can you tell us a little bit about Bonnie? How would you like her to be remembered? What are some of the important things we should know about her? Um, 
<clears throat> when she was younger, she was uh, it was on a crow fair. She was filmed by a I, I don't know a news company, and they asked her what she liked about crow fair, and <laughs> she pointed her finger number one, and she said. Cotton candy, it only cost that one dollar. <laughs> she was beautiful. <laughs> she was good in sports. She was good in school. She was a good child. She was a good sister to her brothers and sisters. And she learned my mistakes mechanic skills because they were always using the ride and I said you have to know what to do if something happens and I kind of taught them the basics of mechanicking their friends would ask them tell your mom this is something that's wrong with my vehicle and ask her what it could be and they would straight out tell them oh it has to be such and such or and then they'd go tell their parents and and they'd find out that they were true. And they said, man, your mom's smart. And I said, yep, yeah, we're trying to learn what we can because we're always using the car. And as she grew older, she had, she has six beautiful children, four of which I'm taking care of. One of the girls is with their dad and her oldest child, Elisha, is uh, basically married up, <laughs> you know, the crow way, the, the Indian way. <laughs> but yeah, she was, she was something else growing up. I always got called to school. And they'd say, you need to come to the school. Bonnie started some trouble and another boy and they're both at each other's throats and so I drive down from the house and I go to the school and me and the teacher would be standing in the doorway and the boy would be out in the hallway and Bonnie would be inside the classroom and next thing we know it she's fighting the boy and I'd say how'd she get past us (laughs) she was (laughs) she was a fighter she should (laughs) have took up boxing (laughs) he was something else She was beautiful, very, very beautiful. She she worked very hard. She struggled, but she she would get her rent paid, her utilities paid, get what she could for her kids. It was always what they needed. And she'd get them, when she had money on the side, she would get them what they wanted but she was awesome she was my masseuse when I'd come home from work she knew I was hurting and she'd get me a hot bath ready when she knew I was coming home and after I got out of the hot bath she would say okay mom lay down I'd lay down and she'd massage me from my head to my feet and it would make me feel better She sounds like she was a beautiful, special woman. She is. She will always be. Hmm. She was something else. She was strong, intelligent, very smart. She was an awesome person. Any person would have loved being around and one her. One of the things I've noticed when people talk about her is just how loved. Yes, 
He is loved. He will always be loved. Do you feel like, um, like there was any kind of justice for Bonnie? No. Not at all. Everyone that was involved, two are passed away and two are in prison. No one's talking. I wish I could just go and shake them up and say, tell me what you did, you guys did to my daughter. What happened? I know you guys know, but no one wants to talk. I said, that was your cousin, your sister, your, your niece. How can you guys not tell me what's going on? Do you think that law Every day. Huh? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. I, we have a lag. Every, every day, every day in my mind... When I wake up, I, I I ask why this had to have happened to her, why they couldn't have called me. I would have got up. I would have went looking for her. Shoot, all my family would have got up and went looking for her. But they didn't tell us for three days. I had searched those three days. I would guess up and go all the way to Wyola, all the way up past our house. I didn't know anything about the Wolf Mountains, even though they're right there. But I, I went every day. I'd go to Lodgegrass and look for her. And my sister, all that time, she knew where she had left her and never said nothing <sighs> until I was making out a report. She called me at the police department and I asked her where she was. I begged her, please tell me where she's at. And she said, last time I saw her was at the Wolf Mountains. I said, you knew she would have cooled down and got back in the ride. But you just left her. You just left her there. It's, it's very hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my whole life. When her kids do something amazing, I always look up at her picture above the bed and say, Bonnie, did you see that? Did you see what they did? Did you see what they're accomplishing? And I always tell my grandkids, tell mommy good night when we go to bed. And I always tell my grandson because he was her right hand man, always went everywhere with her. I always tell him, make sure you leave a space on your bed and a pillow so he, mommy can come and sleep with you at night. And both of them, both the babies say, because mommy's helping God in heaven. And I say, yes. Yeah. When she's through, she'll come down and lay with you, kids. So they say, good night. Good night, Mommy, and they go to sleep. Very, very hard. When I hear her name, it, I break. I fall apart. I wish... I wish the law enforcement was like the NCIS or CSI. I wish they would dig into their digging and digging and get the truth out. And You know, a lot of crimes would be figured out if they just put some effort into it instead of pushing aside and saying that, that that's too much paperwork. One less person to worry about. 
But my daughter was not one less person. No one's child is one less person. Jennifer, I want to share with you, someone commented on Facebook and said that it sounds like you're a very brave person doing brave work of healing and advocating. And I would agree with them. Um, you're very brave. Um, and not just to share with us today, but for all you've done for Bonnie and the MIW, um, for your grandkids. I know it must be, I can't imagine how hard it must be to have to have these conversations with them about their mom. Um, one of the things we wanted to ask you is uh, if law enforcement were to get more involved in her case, are there things that you would like them to do? Yes. Yes, there is. I would like them to get out there and, you know, we were on foot. We, we went from where we started searching and that was where they found her. We searched from there all the way to the Cheyenne border. Every day for four days we searched and we always started from that area. And we never found her until that Friday. So we know someone placed her there, especially the way they said they found her. They wouldn't let me go see her. I tried. I... to hold me down. <laughs> but somehow I got loose and I told him I would be okay and I just needed a minute. And as soon as they backed off, I tried to, con to get myself together. And it was like a football game. I tried to see which way I could go through to run down the hill to see her. But when I would try again, all I wanted to do was to see her and hold her. But they wouldn't let me. grabbed me and tackled me and took me back to the car and all I wanted to do was see my daughter and hold her. When my brothers, they said they seen her and they were told not to go down there. But when they, all the officers went up, a couple of my brothers went down there and 
they said they had to creep around the bushes and they went over there and under the fence and they seen my daughter and they said the way that they had put her it was like they carried her or dragged her and and she was on top of a bunch of branches that were on the ground and she had one shoe and one sock off and her shirt was over her tummy and she had a very thin sweater on and her hair was mangled and had like tree leaves and branches in it it was all wrong it was so wrong in so many ways. When we were, when we came back to Harden, when we were making um, the the things, the arrangements for my daughter's funeral, I asked Willis where her clothes were and he said he had burned them. And that's not right. They were supposed to be for evidence. And that was so wrong. It was like they were trying to cover up something. And I asked for help. And when I asked, kept calling the FBI and Billings or the number they gave me, they kept saying that there nobody would speak up and there wasn't much they could do because no one was saying anything and they were going to close the case. I begged them not to close it because something went, something was wrong. It, I could feel that me as a mother, I, I could feel that there was something wrong. They did something to her. They threw her purse on the side of the road and thought we'd never find it. She had so many stuff in her bag and everything was taken out and all there was was her bill of sale for her car and she always had a lot of stuff in there. So I know they're covering up something. They did something to her. Because she grew up in the mountains. She knew how to survive in the cold in the winter, the snow. We lived at the foot of the Bighorn Mountains, so we we knew they did something to her. But I, I, I wish they would look more into it and talk to them, speak to them now that they're, I don't know, I hope they're not in all drugged up like they were before. Because someone knows something, they're just too scared to say anything. Shoot, when something happens on our reservation by noon, everybody knows. But someone gets killed, everybody just shuts up. That first day when the police were helping us search for my daughter, we were almost to the Sharon borderline of Wyoming we were like way on total different side of where we found her we got reception on my phone and messenger kept going off and one of the messages I I can't remember who it was from but they said we found her or they found her she was beat up and they threw her in the ditch and my sister, I told my sister, I started screaming and crying, and she said, don't believe anything you read. But that's how we found her. So I, I don't know, maybe they can look back and find all the messages on Messenger. I don't know. I, I don't know how they do things like that. But it could be used as evidence. I don't know, I watch a lot of NCIS, CSI, Law and Order. 
I I know they can find out things if they just put a little bit more effort into it. We're not just another native gone dead. We're somebody. And that's what I stand by is we are someone. We're not just another dead Indian. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. And I'm so sorry about how it all happened, what happened to her, everything your family has been through. Um, You didn't deserve any of that. Nobody does. Um, Thank you. There was a new cold case review office opened up in Billings recently um, as part of the government's work on this issue. Um, Do you feel like that office should um, get involved in Bonnie's case? Yes, yes, I do. Have you heard from them at all? No, I haven't heard from anybody, just you. Um, Yeah, I think the hard part about these different government initiatives is that they say that they're going to open up cases or um, that they're going to listen to families and um, they don't really actually do that. Um, I don't know anybody contacted by that cold case review office. Do you think, are there things that the MMIW or the MMIP movement should be doing for families? Um, to support you or to um, help push Bonnie's case forward? Yes, I I think they should help push Bonnie's case forward because she didn't deserve what she got and her kids don't deserve to have lost their mother and I don't deserve to have lost my daughter. (laughs) but we do need answers and all I need is help (sighs) any kind of help would be very appreciated SBI is always here for you. I am always here for you. Um, And we're going to keep pushing for justice for Bonnie. Um, And I know that there's other folks interested in helping because we've gotten some questions on Facebook of how people could get involved, how they could support you. Is there anything in particular that would be helpful to you? I just want whoever did this to get what they deserve. I want my children and my grandkids to know that they didn't get away with it. Because I lost not only my daughter, I lost the best friend. Are there things if that... you would have met her? Sorry, huh? go ahead. Go ahead. If you would have met her, you, you would have liked her. She was awesome. The awesome, awesome person. Me and Bonnie were like uh, two. Uh, I don't know. You know how mother and daughters, they 
argue with each other, mad at each other, laugh at each other, cry with each other. That was me and her. We'd be angry at each other, and by noon, we'd be laughing, and by night, we'd all be eating and watching a movie or something together. But she was always here. Every time I told her I have to work tomorrow, you have to come watch the kids, and she was always here. And she didn't show up, I knew there was something wrong. Now my grandkids always say, oh, but we're with family. I said, your mom was with, it, was with my sister. Her auntie grew up with her as a sister. Family doesn't mean that much to me anymore. After what they did, can't trust nobody. I said, so you can't say I'm with family because that doesn't mean much. How could family do that and not tell us? It's hard. Very, very hard. When my grandkids go to go hang out with their friends or something, I I sit here and I pray and I pray and I pray that God watches over them. And when they don't show up at a certain time when they know they're supposed to be home, I I freak out. I don't want this ever happening to me again. It is the worst horrible feeling a person could ever go through. Some of the people that were with her are in jail. I know some are in prison. I wish I could go and and ask them for myself. I don't know if that would jeopardize anything. So I just sit back. Because I want them to go to court and face me and tell me why they did what they did to my daughter. Why they could have just left her there. When I was little, the teacher asked us what we wanted to be when we grew up. I said, I want to be a, um, I want to be a, a cop either throw somebody in jail or a nurse so I could help someone. And I always watch these uh, NCIS and think, you know, if I was a cop, I could do this or I could check that out. I could help somebody's family. I always tell my grandkids, I said, be who you can be, but be somebody that you will always People will always look up to you and say thank you for helping me. The only thing missing in my life is my daughter. And all I ask is for justice for her. Some days I have my good days. And sometimes the water faucet just won't shut off. One time I put that on my um my Facebook and one of my aunties said, uh, your uncle knows how to wa- uh, fix the uh, sinks. Which, which water faucet is broken? <laughs> I said on my head. And she goes, what? And I said, it's it's a metaphor. I said, it's my eyes. My eyes won't stop running, and I can't shut it off. And they just laughed. They said, oh, jeez. (laughs) 
you know what I want for my Bonnie and all these kids, women, children that have gone missing or murdered or lost and cannot be found. I, I wish justice for every one of them. I wish and pray for the ones that are lost that they be found. Hopefully and praying safely and all in one piece. That's what I pray for every day. Like that's what I pray for. Is there anything that you want people to know about this issue or how they should get involved? Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That's where I lack. I I get scared. I panic. There are people out there that will help. All we need to do is ask for it. I try very hard to ask for help, but in my heart, I can say everything that needs to be said, but when it comes out to saying it, I panic. I try very hard to be strong, but it it hurts so much that It just doesn't come out everything I need to be said. But I am thankful I have you guys for help. Thankful for all of you who reached out and helping me and my grandkids for their mom. always and it's an honor um it's an honor to have your trust um and to have you um you know walk with us and and to let us help let us support you there's another comment on facebook somebody shared that um i'll just read what they wrote they said um i'm so sorry you were not contacted by the cold case office we carry the word with you and support you my continual prayers are with you, and I wish Bonnie peace. We will honor her memory. Our hearts break with yours. So just know you have so many people in your corner who love you, and are praying for you, and praying for your grandkids, and praying for justice for Bonnie. Um, is there anything else? I know that we've talked for quite a bit, and I don't want to take too much out of you. Is there anything else that you want to share in closing? Um, uh, I can't think right now. That's okay. I actually I have one. Wanna say, or go, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, everyone. My heart. With all my heart, thank you. We're here for you and we're holding you and your family and our hearts and our prayers and holding you up. And um, uh, it's unacceptable that there hasn't been justice for, it's unacceptable that law enforcement have not done their job. And um, we're gonna push hard to change that. Love you, Jennifer. I hate that we're doing this over Zoom. All I want to do is give you a big hug. (laughs) Thank you. 
Um, we have another question from Facebook. Somebody was wondering if there are resources that folks can send or if there's anything that they can do to support uh, Bonnie's kids. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Um, I, I'm not sure what they mean either. Maybe um, if there's, uh, you know, things that the community can do for them or um, sometimes SBI, um, we help like, um, we help buy some kids some school supplies or we did a Christmas gift drive last year, do it again this year. Are there little things that the community can do to show Bonnie's kids that they're loved and cared for too? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I put together a, uh, um, uh, wait, Jenny Bear. Wait, yes, I know. Thank you. I put together a, um, a table that I brought up from the basement and that the other kids were using. And I fixed it up half of it. I had Paw Patrol and the other half I had frozen. And I put a plastic over it, and then I bought them each a chair, a pink chair and a blue chair, and these little holders that hold up the iPads or their phones, or and as starting to be their teacher, because I'm keeping them home this year because of the coronavirus. And yesterday, we got their um, iPads from school and I tried to be their teacher and it just got me all confused. <laughs> so if someone can come over and be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and they're only kindergarten and first grade. <laughs> There's only two of them. <laughs> I'm barely learning how to use my phone in certain ways and but yeah, any help, any help whatsoever is so, so greatly appreciated. Where we we accept anything. We're not. I brought them up not to be picky, because there's less fortunate children than them, and I let them know that you know don't be so picky because there's kids out there that don't even have anything close to what you have. So be appreciative of what, what we can afford to give you so they're happy with anything. That Paw Patrol Frozen table sounds awesome. I love Frozen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I put it like right halfway down so they each have their own little space. I think I put a picture of it on Facebook with their little tape, with the chairs and their little computer holders or laptop holders. Oh, so cute. I'll look at, I'll look for one and then I'll send it to you. Um, well, Jennifer, I want to thank you so much for sharing as much as you have with us today. Um, I know it was really hard, but um, it, it's it's really important, I think, for people like we hear about this issue kind of, you know, in the abstract, um, like we hear about numbers or things like that, but we don't always know the stories. And I think it's important for people to hear the stories directly from families. So thank you so much for sharing with us today um, and, and anything we can do for you, we will do. Thank you. Thank you so very much. All of you. All of I don't know who's all there, who's all out there. <laughs> Thank you from my heart and my kids and my grandkids. It really means a lot to us. One thing I ask is everyone be safe, safe out there. Wash your hands, use a mask. 
I know I would like to see and hear from a lot of you. I don't want to hear all of a certain person passed away and we need to help each other and to keep safe and keep healthy. I know I've lost a lot of people that meant a lot to me from this virus. So please be safe out there. Absolutely. I know that COVID has hit um, Crow and Northern Cheyenne really hard. So we're praying for everybody there. And then the fires that were there have been terrible. Here in California, we've had awful fires too. I think it's just a hard time for so many people. Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. I think we're going to turn over to, um, this is a good segue to introduce.